What's up? I'm Aaron and I'm Mod Genshin Man. In this series, I'll tell you all I know about modding the famous anime games so you can hopefully make your own mod soon. There's various kinds of mods and modding clients, but in this series I'll only cover Gimi, using 3D Migoto. Note that 3D Migoto can exclusively manipulate visuals. You won't be able to boost your damage, change your HP or increase your artifact look, unfortunately. However, you can do lots of other cool stuff. We'll do this using Blender, a free 3D modeling software. In this video I'll go over how mods work, what files they use and what file does what. I'll also cover what useful tools there are and where you can find them. I'll explain how to install them and what they do as well. Lastly, I'll cover some basic Blender stuff that you'll need later. Disclaimer, mods can get you banned. You are safe on the official server as long as no one catches a screenshot of both your UID and a mod loaded, but I strongly recommend using a private server. So, part 1. How do mods work? Mods vary in their structure and how they work, but the basic mod will look something like this. This is of a weapon called the Prototype Archaic. Uh, it's a mod that you can find uh, on my game banana profile as well. As you can see, there's various files that all have their own function, and I will go over them real quick. If you're going to mod yourself, I recommend setting your file explorer to show file extensions, so the part after the period. This will help you find some stuff. So first off, the ini file. The ini file is a text file that tells 3D Magoda information about your mod. I'll explain how inis work later in greater detail in a later episode, so for now you can just leave them alone. They will be generated for you, so you don't have to write them yourself. The .dds files are direct raw surface files. It's, these are images uh, often used in game development. They can be opened with paint.net or using Photoshop with a specific plugin. In the mods, uh, there are a few versions of uh, image files. First off, you have the diffuse files. Um, as you can see over here. The fuse files are basically just color textures. They just tell the computer which part should have which color, which is pretty straightforward. You usually also have light map files. Light map files are files that tell the game what kind of shadow should be cast on an object. You can use it to make objects look more metallic or more like skin or more like, uh, for example, cloths. Lastly, you have normal maps. Um, those only happen in characters. Um, that are of the newer countries. Uh, these um, are used to create an illusion of uh, depth, so it doesn't have to be in the actual model, which saves on vertex count. Vertex count is something that I will explain later. These are rarely made manually and will usually just be left alone. As you can see, besides those files, there are also buff files, IB files, and some DDS files like uh, diffuse guides and metal maps. You can leave those alone, their workings will be explained in later episodes, however for now they are not relevant and we won't have to edit them. All those files, uh, all those image files will also be generated for you, but especially the diffuse and the light map will be edited by us. Character mods usually contain multiple of these since they are separated in different parts. I can show that real quick. Let's go to my Alhaita mod for example. As you can see, you have a separate diffuse for the... Let's change the view real quick, large icons. As you can see, um, we have an ini file, a buff file, an IB file. But instead of just one IB file, we have one for the body, um, we have one for the dress, and we have one for the head over here. Besides that, you also have a separate body diffuse, a body light map, but also body normal map, and also a dress diffuse, a dress light map, and a dress normal map. As you can see, uh, character mods have a little more files, but it's the same kind of files, they're just, they're just more of them. Um, I'll cover the, all this in more detail in a later video, but for now we can just look at some simpler versions of them. So, let's go ahead and start installing some tools we will need. If you go to the first link in the description, which will go to the releases of the Genshin Impact model importer made by Silent Night Sound, you will see that there is a few different files. Most importantly, you need the development version of Gimme. Um, you could use the playing version, but I recommend using the development version if you want to make mods. I presume that most of you already have a version of this uh, if you're already in the modding community. But if not, it's very straightforward. The GitHub will explain to you how to install 3D Migodo and it allows you to basically load mods into the game. Besides that, you also need a Blender plugin to be able to import and export mods. You can find it here, it's blender3dmigodo.gimme.py. 
you can just download this file. I'll explain in a few seconds how to install it. Both of these files can just be found in the first link in the description along some other stuff, but we'll look at that later. It's very straightforward to install both of those. So I will not explain how to install Gimme since that is uh, carefully explained in the repository. To install the Blender plugin, you simply have to download it. And as you can see, I already installed it, of course, and it's over here, the Blender Kinemagodo.gimme.py. Then, if we go to Blender, which I presume you already have installed, you can go over to Edit, Preferences, and there is a window with add-ons. Add-ons are basically plugins specifically for Blender. So if I enable add-ons, enabled add-ons only, then you can see that for me, the 3D Magoto plugin is over here. It's already there. So how do you install a plugin? Basically, it's very straightforward. You just click the install button. You go to the specific location where you installed that specific uh, plugin. For example, it's over here. Of course, I've already installed it, but it now is the it's double. And if you then search for 3D Migoto, then you can see that it's there in the list. You might have to enable it because it could be disabled. And then you can just refresh and it will be available for you. If you now go to file and go import, then you will see that there are a few new 3D Migoto uh, options, both for import and export. So we will use those. Now I'm just gonna uh, explain some of the tools we use. So if you launch the Gimme development version, then you'll probably see the screen text on the top and bottom. You can disable this by pressing the numpad zero. If you don't have a numpad, I recommend you use a virtual keyboard since a lot of the numpad numbers will be useful for us later. Besides that, the controls are very simple. You can press F1 to show a help screen and F10 to reload all mods. Your game will lag for a few seconds and then it will show in the top left that it successfully reloaded everything and the green text will show up again, which you can just simply hide. But the Blender plugin that I talked about gave us a few new import and export options. If you go to file import, you will see frame analysis dom. You uses text files, which we can find on the repository in the second um, link in the description. Over here is a very useful repository, again by Sign of Night Sound, who gave us a lot of dumps already of a lot of characters. For example, if you go into player character data, you can see that there's a folder for every single character in the game currently, uh, which you can download and use the mod. However, you cannot download individual folders in this view, but that's very simple to change. By changing the com in the link to dev, it will change to this version, where you can still see the same repository, and you can select a certain folder. For example, um, weapon data, Let's go to Claymore's four stars and they're all there. So let's say I want to change the white blind, for example. All I have to do is download and then I can select a location, for example, Genshin models, weapons, select the folder. I need to allow it to view files and I need to allow it to save changes. And then in that specific folder, uh, oh, I don't have it open. Over here, in weapons, you will see that the white blind folder is there. You don't have to do anything inside this folder for now, but if we now go to Blender, click File, Import, and Frame Analysis Dump, then we can go to the folder we just downloaded, and you will see that there are a few text files. Usually there's more for characters, but for weapons it's always only two. Just select both of them and click the blue button import. And as you can see, the weapon is in our screen. To explain Blender, let's start with the layout tab. There's a few different tabs all the way in the top of your uh, screen and they all have their own separate function. I will call them by the respective name. For example, layout is linked to object mode. So I'll either call it the layout tab or the object mode. Modeling is also called edit mode and etc. Each will have the respective link mode. Directly under that row of tabs, there is a row of buttons that are specific to each tab. The first button just changes your um, tab to a specific viewport. We can leave this alone usually because the existing tabs are enough for us. Directly next to that, you have a drop down, which shows a few certain modes that allow us to edit our um, mesh in a different way. 
for now, we will mostly only, only use object mode, edit mode, sculpt mode, weight paint mode and texture paint. These all have their own specific buttons as you can see. So I will explain those later in the tutorial. However, explaining all of those buttons individually takes a long time. So 99% of the time, I would just tell you to use F3, which opens a little pop-up and you can type in whatever you want. For example, maybe I want to add another object. I can just type add um, and it will add text, camera, speaker, an armature, uh, a cone, a grid, a cube, whatever. You can search up any specific function you want. However, you have to be in the correct window for them. Because all of those functions, which is a huge lot, will take a lot of time to explain individually. I will just explain a specific function once we use it. That much wraps up this uh, first episode. I covered the installation of several tools as well as the basics on Blender and how mods work. In the next episode, I will walk you all through the process of making your very first mod, where we will start with the absolute basics of editing a weapon. Since weapons have no animations, with a few exceptions, and are very straightforward, they are a great place to start. Thanks for watching, and until next time.